Now we want to find the solution for an equation in two variables. First scenario, given a linear equation and the value of one letter, let's find the value of the other letter. Hence, we have found a solution of our equation. This can be done by straight substitution and then solving. Second, given an ordered pair, verify whether or not it is a solution for our equation. Again, substituting both values in must result in a true equation after we simplify it. Next, finding a solution with only the equation given. And here we have liberty. We can select any value of x or y that's convenient and then solve for the other one. Finally, we want to look at an application for equation solutions. Let's begin with the example given 3x plus 4y equals 12, and we know that y equals negative 2. Find the value of x. So we take the original equation, 3x plus 4. We replace y with negative 2, being careful to select the right letter. And now we need to solve this equation. So we have 3x minus 8 equals 12. Let's add 8 to both sides of the equation. So we have 3x equals 20. Notice the 8's cancel out. We divide both sides by 3. So x equals 20 thirds. So the ordered pair that we now have is 20 thirds for x and negative 2 for y. So x is negative 20 thirds and here's our ordered pair solution. Ordered pair because it's two numbers and x always comes first and y comes second. Now suppose we're given an equation 2x plus 5y equals 20 and we want to verify does negative 5, 6 satisfy the equation? Is it a solution? And negative 15, negative 2. Notice that negative 5 is the x value and 6 is the y value. So we take 2, replace x with negative 5, plus 5 times y, which is 6. Does that, in fact, equal 20? So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 5 times 6 is 30. Negative 10 plus 30 is 20. Since 20 equals 20, therefore, we know that negative 5, 6 is, in fact, a, is part of our solution. Let's try negative 15, negative 2. We have 2 times negative 15 plus 5 times negative 2 equals 20. So we get negative 30 minus 10 equals 20. We get negative 40 equals 20? No, I don't think so. Therefore, we can conclude that negative 15, negative 2 is not part of the solution of this particular equation. Now, as we prepare to get ready to graph, we want to find some solutions for 2x plus 7y equals 14. Now, there are actually an infinite number of solutions, so let's pick a convenient value of x. Many times zero is easy to work with. So if we put zero in for x, we have two times zero plus seven times y equals 14. Two times zero is zero, so now we have seven y equals 14. And notice we divide both sides by seven y equals two. So we now have the ordered pair zero, two. But suppose we're looking for another solution. This time, Let's let y equal 0. In that case, we write 2x plus 7 times 0. Notice that you have to be careful to put the 0 in for y equals 14. 2x, 7 times 0 is 0, so we have 2x equals 14. Divide those sides by 2, so x equals 7. So now we have 7, 0. By the way, if you let x equal 0, you're finding what's known as the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. If you let y equal 0, you're finding what's known as the x-intercept, where the line crosses the x-axis. Let's take an application. Given y equals 162x plus 4,365, where x represents the number of years after 1993, and y is the number of programs for the disabled. Suppose we want to complete this table. Notice we have x is 1, x is 2, x is 6. We could have other values as well. Well, each one we do separately. y equals 162. We replace the x value with 1 plus 4,365. 
So 1 times this is 162. So we're taking 4365 plus 162. So we have 4527. Although we could continue using this method, the most efficient method is to get a calculator, especially a graphing calculator. So if we do that, if we put a 2 in, we wind up with 4,689. If we put 6 in, we wind up with 5,337. It's a really important skill to be able to replace x's into an equation and find the values of y.